All right, everybody, I'm Robert and I am in the Apex Barn. And today I'm gonna to try and finally nail down a video about the Toyota Supra. I have done, I think now four videos which we have tossed each one of them. And the reason is, is because every time I get in the car, I am too negative to actually submit the video to the Nürburgring for approval. So we have relocated to the barn. Um, I don't think I'm gonna to be totally negative in this video, but I just don't wanna to have to watch what I say. Uh, the reason is that what I'm going to say is how is it that in 2018-19 when this car is developed, do we have the technology to build a car, yet the engineers missed the boat by a mile. They absolutely missed the boat when they designed the suspension, especially in the rear end of this car. It's an absolute joke. Now, that's probably the most negative I'm going to be. Let's talk about facts. We bought this car originally and it was going to be Misha's daily driver. It was gonna be a car that was owned by Apex or, or by me, and Misha was going to use it as his daily driver, and he was really excited about it. He was going to use it as a uh, car like the Sub 7 Up was, where he built it, got parts, and did a lot of neat things, and took you guys on a ride so you could see the process of modifying the car. He got in a good relationship with Audi and was getting a lot of, uh, what would you call them, um, press cars and things like that that he was able to drive for some time on end. And he said, you know what, Robert, I think that I probably don't need this car. Why don't we take it and, and, and we can put it in the Apex rental fleet. So, um, you know, of course I said, well, yeah, let's do it. That sounds like a really cool idea. So the car got delivered. We went down and picked it up together. And that was the day that he announced to, to basically all of his social media that, oh, yeah, you know that we were getting the car, but the purpose of it has changed and it's going to be an Apex rental car now. So we were really excited for it to be an Apex rental car. And I was actually the first person to drove it. I drove it from the dealership back to Apex and I was immediately concerned before even getting back to Apex. The car had some serious issues in the rear end. When you would lift off, entering a turn, coming out of a turn, any point the rear end would start moving around. And I said, okay, this can be a problem. So of course the first thing I did was take it out on the track and my gosh, was it terrible. Anytime that you go into a transition from loading the front end to the rear end, the back end would actually change directions. Uh, it was basically tracking and sometimes it would point you left, sometimes it would point you right, but it was the worst feeling you could imagine. And it didn't matter where you did it, even going over bumps and crests, even as you were going straight, it would do it. Just that transition would make the car unsettle. There's a lot of things that can cause this. One of them is possibly uh, you've got your tie rod ends and your tie rod ends or your tie rods essentially adjust your toe angle. And that's what helps toe in, toe out or a neutral toe situation. And maybe you have a bushing that's too soft in it. There were cars uh, that were produced from manufacturers that had bushings that were too soft and under power those would flex and the bushing, uh, the tie rod end would move in the bushing and you would actually get uh, movement in your toe angle as you were driving. So that's one possibility. And another one is what uh, the, probably the title of this is, is maybe Tech Talk Bump Steer. Uh, bump Steer is what happens when a car suspension settles down and your control arms go up and down and as they go up and down, the actual toe angle of your wheels changes. Now toe angle, or, or I should say bump steer, is something that a lot of race teams will work with. And bump steer can actually be used to your advantage. You can set up a situation where the car compresses and loads in certain ways and it actually adjusts your toe angle. And if you're very good with it and very savvy, you can actually make this work to your advantage and make your car faster. Obviously, you really need to know what you're doing. That's not the case here. That's not what happened in this case, okay? It wasn't planned, it wasn't designed it's an absolute flaw in the car. We then take the car out on the Autobahn and we would do some high speed runs, maybe hit 250, 260, and you let off the throttle. And immediately when you let off the throttle, the front end, all the weight transfers to the front end, just because when you're doing 260 kilometers an hour and you let off, you have a lot of wind force slowing you down. The front end loads and the back end just starts moving around and it really was scary. Um, the, actually the last car that I remember driving that was almost as bad as this. This is the worst I've driven in this circumstance was the 570S when I first got it. I picked up my 570S. I had Maximus in the seat with me. He had to have been maybe maybe two or three years old. And we came around a turn and we were only doing, only doing 220 kilometers an hour on the Autobahn. That's not a big deal. And there was a truck in front of us that was switching lanes around the turn. And I just slowly let off the throttle. And as I slowly let off the throttle, the back end just started kind of swinging out. We weren't in a major drift, but it was definitely a very eerie feeling from a new car. So this is reminding me heavily of that, but was actually worse than that. So what you have is a situation where the rear end compresses and decompresses. And as that happens, your toe angle changes. What we can do is we can come over here. I've got some wheels. We'll step over to this side and we will look at these wheels right here. Okay. 
You guys may have seen my Pista video where I talk about what I prefer in terms of front toe and, and how it responds to the car. Sometimes you can do different adjustments with toe angle to make the car turn in very responsive. Assuming this is the front of the car and this is the back of the car, uh, you can do toe in and that will actually slow down the responsiveness of the, of, of the turn in and everything like that. And you would never go neutral. Neutral is a situation where both of your tires are running perfectly parallel. This is the same axle, so let's say we're looking at the front of the car right now. They're running perfectly parallel. This car is going to track and move around. It's going to follow the road. It's not really uh, in control of itself, if you would. You can go to toe in, and that's going to cause a drag, and that's going to make the wheels actually drive into each other ultimately. And as these wheels drive into each other, the axle's holding them straight, and so that's scrubbing and making the car forcefully drive in a straight line. The same thing happens when you have toe out. The wheels are actually driving apart from each other. Obviously, this is a very dramatic scenario, but the wheels are actually pulling apart from each other and your suspension is holding them in place. So they're actually scrubbing. As they're driving, they're scrubbing, and that's keeping the car going in the same direction. The worst thing that you can have is let's just say you've got right now, since we're set up in toe out, and then all of a sudden the suspension compresses. And as the geometry of the suspension compresses, all of a sudden you can go from toe out to toe in or from toe in back to toe out. And then when the, tire, when the suspension raises back up, then it goes back again. What happens is at that middle point when you're transitioning, the car starts moving directions because it no longer has that friction. It no longer has that uh, toe angle leading the car and keeping things stable. And that is what's happening on the back of, of the Supra. As it bounces, it starts adjusting. So as you see, as this movement is happening, you get a very insecure situation. In my opinion, the worst thing that you can have is bump steer that goes beyond zero, toe in to toe out, toe out to toe in. It is almost impossible or very difficult to have a true situation where there's no bump steer at all. So a little bit of, a little bit of or a toe angle change during your, your, your suspension travel is acceptable, that's okay. However, you really shouldn't be crossing that zero threshold and going back and forth, and that's what makes this car so unstable. So originally, like I said, I thought that maybe we could fix it by putting uni balls, a solid bushing on the uh, tie rod ends. Well, that didn't solve it. Uh, we obviously had several plans for this car in terms of a JRZ suspension um, and different things like that. So we went ahead with those uh, plans because we wanted to continue improving the car as it was. And it was really unfortunate because every single time I got in the car, if it was an alignment, okay, the alignment made it better, but it didn't fix it because the rear end is still moving around. Wow, this, the suspension feels amazing. You get the car loaded up in a turn and you get it fully loaded and everything's set. And my gosh, the balance is unreal. The car feels so cool when it's loaded up. You get out of the turn, you apply the gas, fine, it's just powering through and then you hit the brakes and it moves around. So each iteration, each modification that we did, AP brakes, uh, PFC brake discs, we've got the Nanking Aero ones with the ProTrek wheels, the JRZ, every single thing you saw how much those modifications improved the car, but you've got this back end still sitting here that just didn't, it's just not coming around. So obviously we replaced the, the bushings and, the, and, and everything in the tie rod ends, that didn't fix it. All along, even if you go back to some of Misha's first videos, I was saying that as the car compresses, the toe angle changes and that's the problem. All along, that was always prevalent and, and, and really was the issue. But unfortunately, during this time, we didn't have the parts to fix it and we, didn't, we knew what the problem was, but we couldn't fix it. So it was just something that just constantly made me angry. This is a reason why we actually took it out of the rental fleet because I said, if this car continues on the track, it's going to get crashed. This car will not drive a season on track with people who want to come and experience a Supra and it's not going to make it out of it. It's going to eventually, the back end's going to point in the wrong direction and someone's going to end up in the wall and it's too nice of a car for that to have happen. So along the ways, you guys know our friend Fabi. He's around all the time. He loves cars and he was telling me, Robert, I'm thinking about buying a Supra and I said, you know what? I would probably not do that. I would save your money. Um, I've got a Supra. If it's something you really want to try out, you're welcome to use it. Go ahead and run it for a year, uh, however long you want to, and you can, get, you can form your own opinion on it, but I really hate for you to go buy one, lose your money, and not be happy with it. So he's taken the car over, and he's driving it, actually, and he's using it, and he's also sharing in my frustration with it. And the next step that we are working on is we've been doing a lot of research. There have been some companies that have come out with new tie rod ends, in fact, complete control arm sets and everything, and we're looking at which one we want to go with because that's simply the only thing that's going to take uh, and fix this car. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of look into what is bump steer, how can it be adv advantageous, what can you do with it, and why, has it, why is bump steer the biggest curse that the Toyota Supra has, and why am I absolutely embarrassed that this car was even built like this? I, I just can't believe it. I'm absolutely shocked. The lower the car goes, the worse it gets. That is actually a common problem with, uh, with certain suspensions, but to, to build a car with this geometry from the factory is just, it's mind boggling. So hopefully this doesn't happen again. Hopefully they can make a new cradle, a new, a, a new geometry and fix future cars. But the way that it is right now, um, I suspect that you're gonna see some cars that are gonna have some problems. I don't know how YouTube reviews and car reviews haven't pointed this out before. Um, I've now seen three different cars and each of the cars feels exactly the same way. I actually had a very well-respected performance shop from the area come to me the other day and ask me if they could drive my Supra. And I said, why do you want to do that? They said, because we are working on a customer's car and the back end just doesn't feel right. I said, don't take mine. It's probably worse. That's the simple fact of the matter. They appreciated my honesty and said, thank you, Robert. We probably don't need to drive it. We're having the same problem. And I explained to them the only solution is going to be new tie rod ends, complete uh, angles, uh, uh, adjustment of the geometry from the rear end. And that's the only solution there is. So that's going to be what we do next. We will fix this. We will make the car work because once it works, I think it's going to be an awesome car. The balance is going to be fantastic under braking. The car feels so good. And uh, I do look forward to that day. But until then, kind of bummed. Anyways, catch you guys later.